What's up, Taiwan? I'm Rhys Ayers with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan's Coast Guard says a Chinese fishing boat has sunk near the outlying Jinmen Islands after it was hit by another vessel. Seven people were on board, four have been rescued, and three are still missing. Separately, on Saturday, a body was found on a nearby beach. The Coast Guard is investigating whether the death is related to the sinking incident. It comes as tens of thousands of Chinese fishing boats took to the waters around Jinmen after Beijing lifted a more than three-month-long fishing ban. Taiwan's Coast Guard called for caution in the congested waters. Tensions between China and Taiwan are high since the death of two Chinese fishers after a run-in with Taiwan's Coast Guard earlier this year. Taiwan's defense ministry is reporting a spike in Chinese military activity around Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADIZ. The data shows that since January, China has been increasing the number of military aircraft it sends to put pressure on Taiwan. So far this year, there have been more than 1,700 incursions, which is more than last year's total. Analysts say that China has ramped up its military activity since President Lai Qingde took office in May. For more on what these Chinese military trends mean for Taiwan security, our reporter Jaime Okan spoke to Ben Lewis, co-founder of PLA Tracker, an open source database that tracks China's military presence around Taiwan. So Ben, looking at information about Chinese military planes coming into Taiwan's ADIZ, it looks like we've already surpassed the total amount of incursions from last year. We've already beat that number this year with only eight months into the year. Why is that significant and what does that say about the severity of the situation? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, looking at the numbers, we've the entire amount of Chinese military aircraft tracked inside Taiwan's ADIZ in 2023, we've beaten that in eight months. And four of those months, there was almost no activity at all because of the stand down that the PLA engaged in related to Taiwan's presidential elections and then the period in between the election and inauguration. The vast majority of the violations that we've seen, these aircraft flying, you know, a few dozen miles away from Taiwan are in since May 20th, since President Lai was inaugurated. That's an unprecedented surge in activity. The tempo, the intensity, the scale, is unlike anything we've ever seen before. Looking at data about these incursions, it looks like there's a steady uptick since January of 2024. Uh, coincidentally, that, that's also when Taiwan's presidential election took place. Is there a direct correlation between that? I think so. I mean, I think the initial increase at the start of the year was from a very low point at what would be considered below average numbers of activity. Uh, gradually up. And then starting with President Lai's inauguration is when it really skyrocketed. So I, I think the relationship there is quite clear. Well, so far, that's been the case. Uh, every month since May, the number's gone up. Um, we had 437 last month, which is the second highest ever. The only time that's been beat is August 2022, when we had the largest military exercises ever in history around Taiwan. So in terms of scale, uh, we're really we've hit an unprecedented level. Whether they can sustain that, the PLA, or whether they want to sustain that going into the U.S. presidential elections remains to be seen. But as of right now, based on current trends, um, I have reason to believe that it will. Well, Ben, with so many incursions happening and we're seeing an increase year on year, sometimes doubling and tripling of the amount of incursions that China is going into Taiwan's ADIZ, why are people more concerned about this and why isn't a bigger deal here in Taiwan? I think it's the tyranny of the 24-hour news cycle, if nothing else. The, the Chinese do this every single day. And when you're sending 10, 15 aircraft a day, eventually 10 or 15 aircraft aren't scary anymore to the to the public. Um, and then you bump that up to 20, 25 every single day, eventually 20 or 25 aircraft are not really going to get your attention. Um, you know, when I first started working on this, the kind of consensus among uh, colleagues I was working with it on was that, you know, 10 or more aircraft was a big deal. And so, you know, I think normalization has been one of, if not the primary goal of Beijing uh, with these activities, I think they want to make it so that people don't care that they have a, a, a near permanent military presence around Taiwan because it starts their, uh, suits their objectives very nicely. So my concern is that, you know, from where I sit, not a lot of actions are being taken in terms of how to, to counter these activities. And obviously there are limits, but 
I'm not seeing a lot of proactiveness in Taipei or Washington, for that matter, on how we deal with this unprecedented and status quo altering surge. That was Ben Lewis, co-founder of PLA Tracker. Taiwan has lowered its forecast for this year's GDP growth. The government statistics office cut its prediction from 3.94% to 3.9%, citing lower than expected exports. It would be the highest growth in the country since 2021, when the economy grew over 6.6%. The office says the country's economy is still on course for stable growth next year, adding that demand for technology products remains high due to an AI boom. But shipments of non-tech products have dropped. Once in decline, the practice of selling young girls off for marriage is making a comeback in Pakistan, as families across the country continue to struggle years after a devastating natural disaster. What would typically be a moment of celebration, a time of reluctance and fear for Pakistani teenager Mektab Ali Sheikh, as she's married off against her will. It's for her own good, her father says, as the family struggles financially, particularly since widespread flooding in 2022 devastated their village a disaster that caused billions of dollars worth of damage across Pakistan, one of the costliest natural disasters in human history. Over 1,700 people died and millions were left homeless. The number of underage Pakistani girls being married off for money had been decreasing in the years leading up to the 2022 floods. Climate scientists say climate change is making natural disasters like flooding more common, and the economic insecurity that followed from 2022 is bringing the practice back. <laughs> It's an issue local human rights groups say is consuming villages. तो उसमें क्लाइमेट चेंज के असरात या फ्लड के बाद जो फिगर हैं वो एक साल में जो है ना 45 शादियां हुई हैं एक गांव में सिर्फ वो 250 घरानों पे मुश्तमल गांव है और उनकी जो हालत ये है कि पिछले 3 महीनों में 15 शादियां हो गई हैं 2 years after flood waters swept away much of Pakistan's already strained resources Economic desperation is striking hardest at the most vulnerable. And for girls like Metab, entering these marriages is the only way to keep food on the table. Justin Wu and Reese Ayres for Taiwan Plus. A new strain of Mpox has arrived outside Africa for the first time, with Sweden reporting its first case of the more deadly form of the disease. The diagnosis came just one day after the World Health Organization raised the disease's threat level to a public health emergency of international concern. The new variant has a fatality rate of 3.6% in Africa, 18 times that of the previous strain, and has killed over 500 people in the Democratic Republic of the Congo alone this year. Taiwan's Centers for Disease Control is closely monitoring the outbreak. 那除了提升旅游疫情警示之外，我们也会在这个国际机场港部呢，主动来提醒旅客注意相关的一些国际疫情变化跟如何做好自身的防护。More people in Taiwan will now receive earthquake alerts. Notifications are sent out to cell phones before earthquakes occur in Taiwan. Previously, people in areas expected to experience at least level four seismic intensity would get notified but a 10% margin of error has now been added. 
It follows criticism after people in seven cities across Taiwan didn't get notified before the magnitude 7.2 tremor hit eastern Taiwan in April. Anti-smoking groups are criticizing the Taiwanese government for allegedly flip-flopping on its resolution to ban flavored tobacco. The legislature reached a non-partisan consensus last year to ban all flavorings. But the health ministry recently changed its language, saying it will prohibit 27 additives on top of the four already banned. Citizen groups are protesting the amendment and accusing the government of watering down its own policy. The health ministry says it's open to feedback and that the policy is in line with regulations in the US and European Union. Taiwan's public television service has announced a media platform for children and teenagers, aimed at hosting the most diverse content in the country. The platform, PTS Extra Small, will debut on August 20th. It will host a diverse range of programs, including animation, drama, music, and reality-based puzzles. These shows aim to highlight Taiwan's rich cultural diversity. Saturday is International Homeless Animals Day. To help address Taiwan's stray dog problem, a local organization is training up promising pups to become educational support animals. Our reporter Eric Gao takes a look at what these working dogs can do. This dog isn't playing with this class of special education kids. He's actually hard at work. This is Chiffon, a six-year-old educational support dog. Friendly and confident now, he was once a stray living on the streets and extremely anxious around people. But now he's here with one purpose, to help these children learn. Chiffon became an educational support dog five years ago, after he was adopted by Paw for Good, an educational organization here in Taiwan. They trained him to be calm and focused, even in high-pressure situations. Pondering is another of Paul for Good's working dogs. She and Chiffon are two of the group's five educational support dogs. They've helped over 21,000 people with depressive disorders or disabilities and children with special needs around the country. Paw for Good only trains stray dogs. They say strays can relate to humans better than other dogs. What these dogs do seems straightforward, just playing with the kids. However, the games are specially designed to offer the kids emotional support and improve their concentration and communication skills. Teachers say they see a big difference after playing with the dogs. There are only a few of these educational support dogs in Taiwan, which Paul for Good says is far from enough. They hope to train up more handlers and help medical professionals understand the importance of such dogs. They say if educational support dogs do become more widely used, it'll benefit both the country's humans and its strays. Alex Chen, Sandy Chi, and Eric Gao for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching at Taiwan Plus News. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, we take you to Argentina's Glacier for the Winter Swimming World Cup. I'm Reese. Take care and see you next time. Thank you.